I'm the AmeriCorps Watershed Coordinator here at Riverlink, and today I want to share with you some techniques that we use with our Adopter Stream program to repair mild to moderately eroding stream banks. Many of these techniques I'm going to be sharing with you today can also be found in North Carolina State Extension's Small Scale Stream Repair Guidebook. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to ask yourself, is there a problem to fix? I often tell people streams are meant to move. Their function is to transport water, sediment, and nutrients. But the key is to see, is it changing in a way that's going to cause a problem in the future? Here's what to look for. Erosion. Is it happening on the surface, underneath the bank, or both? Exposed tree roots or undercutting? Loss of vegetation or plants that don't match their surroundings? Water that can't spread out during a heavy rain or moves too fast through a narrow channel? Streams are complex, but each one has a unique potential. We assess how water moves, how sediment settles, and whether the surrounding plants are helping hold it all together. For deeper issues, where the stream's shape or function has changed dramatically, restoration is needed. And that means permits, engineers, and heavy equipment. This video focuses on repair. Techniques that don't require a permit and can be done by everyday people. If you are unsure, always check with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, NCDEQ, or your local permitting office. Hey there, I'm Eli Smith. I'm the Watershed Program Specialist here at Riverlink. I'll be talking about the hand tools that we use for stream repair. Everything that we use can be done by hand, it is low cost, low tech, low risk. We're not using any heavy equipment and this is really accessible work that anyone can do. Starting with a roll of coir matting, which is made from coconut and this is biodegradable. It's 160 feet long. Beyond that, we have some live stakes in water. They are clippings of small trees and bushes that like to live near the stream side. We use a mix of native grasses and wildflowers as our riparian seed mix that we will spread. We've got some native plugs we will be planting today. Behind me we've got a bale of straw that we use to spread over the seeds to help them germinate. Moving on to some of the woody material, we have dead stakes. Uh, these are eco stakes, smaller ones to help us pin in the coir matting. We also use some larger dead stakes to really secure in this coir matting into the stream bank as well. A piece of rebar comes in handy if there are any pilot holes that need to be drilled to put live stakes into the stream bank. We use some rubber mallets to help drive in the eco stakes and dead stakes. Hand trowels come in handy for planting the plugs and a large mallet. This is metal and that can be used for some of the larger dead stakes. To measure the stretch of stream, we have this rollout measuring tape, really durable and handy. What we use to cut the coir matting because it's really tough. Um, we've got some more industrial strength titanium coated scissors here. If there needs to be any finer debris removed, any roots that we will need to get out of the way, we'll use some loppers to cut that. And moving up towards the top of the stream bank for some minor regrading work, we will implement some shovels, different types of shovels for that. And we've got rakes we'll bring onto the site with us to help with the seeds and just kick up a little bit of that soil on the side of the stream bank. This is a pickaxe. We use this for doing some fine scraping and tuning of the stream bank. So now that we ran through those, I'm gonna show you now how we use them for implementing our stream repair. When choosing where to repair, look for sections that have mild to moderate erosion. You want places where natural materials like coir matting, seeds, and live staking can stabilize the area without needing heavy machinery. Start by measuring the section of stream bank you plan to repair. This will tell you how long to cut your coir matting. 
a biodegradable mat that protects the soil while plants establish roots. Unroll the coir matting along your measured section. Using titanium scissors, cut the matting to size. Be sure to cut it cleanly so it fits securely along the slope. So right now we are just removing some debris uh, so that we can have a face ready to be resloped, seated, and matted down for the repair. We want to be able to lay the courier matting down flat enough so it stays secure whenever more water and debris comes down river, it doesn't wash it out. Just have a sturdy kind of placement for the matting there. So now that we have cleared off the face a little bit from some of the woody debris, we are going to roll this cut piece of coir coconut matting back up, place it down, stake it in at the bottom. Next, place the coir mat at the toe of the stream, the very bottom where the water meets the land. The toe is crucial. It's where most erosion starts. Protecting this zone helps stabilize the entire slope above it. The toe of a stream is where the bed meets the bank. We want this fabric to be staked down so that it catches things before it enters the stream. So now we are going to drive in some of the dead stakes towards the bottom here. And that way we are securing in the matting before doing some of the grading work so that when we are messing with the soil up top, it doesn't go straight into the stream and increases sediment in the stream. That's what we're trying to avoid. And when we're driving the stakes into the toe of the matting here, we want them pointed upstream. Uh, that helps secure the matting. So now we're going to take this matting and flip it over here. That way, whenever we re-slope the stream bank and disturb the soil, it'll help catch some of it and suggest where it wants the soil to fall. As you can see here, this bank is slightly eroding. This transition right here to the stream, as you can see, the soils are not holding, they're unvegetated, and they just fall down. Before you lay seed or matting, use hand tools to gently reshape the eroded bank. You want to flatten steep slopes into a gentler grade, which will help new plants take hold and slow down water runoff. At least a 45 degree slope is really nice to see that bank. So now I'm spreading our riparian seed mix spread with a winter rye grain for temporary cover. So that's both our permanent and our temporary seed cover. We're going to spread it on our slope and that protects the surface whenever water is running over it or the water is flowing on the banks that face erosion. And then I'm coming in back behind Madeline with the rake just to kind of nestle it in there so that it helps with soil contact and we'll have a better chance of germinating. Our next step is to spread some of the straw and that helps with providing moisture for the seed, kind of acts like a microclimate so that again, the seed has a better chance of germinating. Nice work. <laughs> so now that we have Resloped, seeded, place straw down. We're going to dig a trench upstream. Now that we have our trench, I want to fold this matting back up and stake it in. I know this process of placing down the matting and putting in the hardwood stakes takes some time, but it really does help hold that soil until that vegetation can grow and help stabilize the soil for you. I'm back at the upstream area where I dug my trench and staked in the matting, and now I'm just going to cover it back up and kind of tamp it down so that if the water flows over it, it doesn't lift the whole thing up. And so now I'm just going to put a little bit of this riparian and temporary seed back over the spot that we just disturbed. And so now that we have put our large two foot wood stakes securing the matting on the edges, we're going to fill in the middle with these eco stakes and we're going to face them with this little notch looking upstream. Now that we have our coir matting in place, it's time to anchor it and strengthen the stream bank by planting live stakes. Live stakes are cuttings from water-loving plants, like willows. 
When planted into moist soil, they naturally grow new roots and shoots, helping to stabilize the bank and prevent future erosion. To plant a live stake, first, choose a branch about the thickness of a finger. Make sure you plant it right side up. The end with the slanted cut goes into the ground and the flat end stays above. Insert about two thirds of the stake deep into the soil. For thinner, wispier cuttings, bundle several together to increase success rates. The more you plant, the better the coverage. Place them along the bottom of the stream, so alternating every foot. So we'll put one down closer to the toe, and then we'll move up a foot and over a foot, place one in, down, over a foot. So it kind of makes a zigzag pattern um, to protect that toe with these woody, bendy species. Over time, these live stakes will establish strong root systems that weave through the soil, creating a living, growing reinforcement for the stream bank. Another important thing is to position these live stakes looking downstream. So the water is flowing from there to here and I'm placing it this way. That is due to the reason that whenever these grow into larger bushes, you want them to be able to bend with the water and not fight it and rip out the ground. And so these are small plants that are potted and you can buy at most nurseries. Um, they're plugs. And this is a type of sedge and sedges are known to really enjoy wet feet. They are water loving plants. And so now that we've stabilized most of the bank and the face of it, I noticed that there was some soil that's very, very wet, kind of peeking out that we couldn't cover with our matting today. And so I'm going to spread some of these through the matting, plant them in. As you can see, they have really small, so they fit really well. You can just move the matting like this. Um, honestly, here you can just move the soil a little bit. But something to note is that many of these are root bound, so just kind of disturb the roots a little bit, pull them apart, stick them in the ground. So I know what we just showed looks like it doesn't really do a whole lot. We use some clippings of plants, some matting, and some stakes to stabilize the slope. But over time, this stuff will grow and hold and hug the bank to keep the soils where they are and allow the stream to flow. And here in North Carolina, one of the number one pollutants is sediment. And so we're keeping that sediment out of the water and out of the stream while also protecting the lives and the homes and the stories that we build around them. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other thoughts or questions or want to look at any of the resources we shared here, check out our Adopt the Stream webpage on our Riverlink website. Thank you.